Hello and welcome to this short story series, A Day in the Life of Julian of Norwich, narrated by myself, ICSI All Things. If you want to follow along, please subscribe and hit the bell button to be informed of the next story posted. Thank you. Part two, the power of gratitude. Good day, beautiful souls. I, Julian of Norwich, would like to introduce you to my little garden today. I'm able to take the air through a tiny window to the outside of the church. I love to plant my feet on the grass, now it is spring, and lean against my favourite oak tree, feel the warmth of the sun on my face as she graces me with her presence this day. I feel gratitude for this small but pretty high-walled space where I may commune with nature and marvel at God's creations. The birds know me very well, and if I seat myself still enough on the stone and wooden bench, they will hop closer and closer for their dried morsel of bread. My favourite is Robin Redbreast. He sings such joyfully persistent pinking sounds as if he's willing me to join in with his chorus. Today he cocks his eye at me in curiosity and waiting for his treat. I enjoy these stolen moments before Amelia the cat arrives in a flurry and frightens them all away. Yoy! I expect now that you're more confined to your homes because of the coronavirus lockdown, some without work, and now with all your chores done, you'll be spending more time in nature on your single committed day uh, walk a day for exercise. Many of you will be slowing down to make the most of your bid for freedom, observing the six feet distancing rule between you and another who is not of your household in order not to be contagious of the virus. During the bubonic plague, quarantine was a lot more harsh. If it looked as if there was no recovery in sight, the dying one was battened up in the home alone and left to die. So count your blessings, dear ones, that you have hospitals and intensive care. In these isolated weeks, maybe you're now taking the time to really see the marvellous workings of Mother Earth. At a snail's pace, there are many fascinating things to be observed and appreciated. You may have missed them before in your constant striving for material things. For example, I have learnt how the bees look after an injured one when I watched mesmerised whilst a honeybee had become trapped in a case of hardened honey around his body. He was struggling to walk and let alone fly. All of a sudden, a rescue team of his kind appear and together chip it off his torso for a fair length of time, swapping shifts until he's clean again. I marvel that such sentient beings would abandon their busyness to come to the aid of another and know that there are many mysteries that we do not understand about the harmony of nature. I feel that you're learning these acts of kindness also in these unusual circumstances. Perhaps you're coming to someone's rescue who can no longer look after themselves without your kind assistance in these difficult times. Older folk, who cannot get food for themselves or sick ones that need tending and this is much appreciated by the Lord. It is during contemplation of the loving nature of God that created these bees that my heart swells in gratitude as I stare at the sky. I feel a rush of appreciation and I see golden letters suspended in the sun it seems to be spelling out a code of some kind, like a sparkling light language. I cannot understand it, but it's a beautiful vision. I wonder what it means. When I'm busy with my tasks, I do not notice such things. But when I sink into a relaxed and lucid state, all cares and thoughts melt away, and I am no longer aware of the everyday sounds of daily life coming from the nearby streets. 
suddenly I'm brought back from my dream into what you call third dimensional reality by a splattering of raindrops on my face and my hair and I hastily pick up my skirts and my throw and I hurry inside. Today I've put aside my needlework in order to continue writing my secret book which I'm going to call Divine Revelations of Love. It is not about these everyday thoughts, but is a collection of precious shoeings or visions that came upon me while I was fighting for my life many years ago in 1373. At the age of 30, I had piously begged, implored and prayed to God that I may fall sick to the point of death. This was in order to be more fully understanding of his compassion and to know how it felt to the Lord Jesus during his last passionate prayers on the cross. Well, he heard my prayers and he struck me down with an illness that I didn't think I would recover from, so severe was it. After three days of agonising fever and chills, I began to lose the feeling in the lower half of my body. And then I requested I might be propped up with cushions that I might gaze, gaze upon the cross. In the next two days, the feeling was lost in the upper half of my body also, and the curate began to read me my last rites as he held the crucifix aloft for me to look upon. I could see nothing except the dear face of my Lord Jesus as all else became black around me, and I felt shadowy entities trying to draw close to me. Of a sudden I began to see visions and Jesus spoke with me about the nature of his unconditional love for us all. He showed me many things I had heretofore not grasped and I began to regret that I might die before I received the full extent of these wondrous insights from him. After the 16th vision, I no longer had the strength to keep my eyes fixed upon him and I fell away delirious into what I expected to be my last waking moments on this earth. It is times such as these that many of you dear ones have known what you call a near-death experience. It is that world betwixt and between which I described earlier, the void between life and death itself where the veil is thin and miracles can happen. I've heard you tell similar stories about the light that you saw at the end of a long tunnel, where you walked into a beautiful garden or sp spoke to a shining angel. I know that just as I, you may have wished to relinquish your spirit and desire to go to heaven. Here is where all is light, joy and peace in my experience but the holy spirit guided you back to earth with the words it is not yet your time you have not completed that which you came here to do it took a long time for me to prize my eyelids open they were as if made of lead but i i had to know if i was still in that glorious garden of god it seemed I was not, for out of the shadows I could make out the face of my nurse, deathly pale with concern. As I turned my head and took a breath, she cried out, Lady Julian, you are not taken away from us, and began to weep for joy. I smiled inside, as I did not yet have the strength to move a single muscle. I knew in an instant that God had answered my prayer and that I had survived in order to devote myself more fully to him in service. My heart swelled with love and gratitude for his mercy. In the following days I became stronger and the will came back into me to live again. Here I also draw a comparison with you beautiful ones who are grateful to have experienced a similar miracle as I. Many of you have had what you call a paradigm shift, changed your perception of what is possible and have changed your life accordingly. Not all that will have dedicated their life to the Lord as I chose, but 
you will have appreciated the chance to learn a new skill, throw yourself into a new challenge, or even write a book about your experience. Those of you who witnessed what comes after death, as I did, will no longer fear it, and perhaps you're able to bring much comfort to those who have lost a loved one and during the coronavirus. I am now a woman with a mission. The fire in my soul is for Jesus only, and I know that he is my only husband. This is not for everyone, but it was my earnest heart's desire. Perhaps now you can understand why I sold the property that I had been left when my fa family all died of the plague. And I requested that the bishop bless me into the role of anchorite from within this Catholic church. I can imagine this is not the normal choice that we strive for pleasure and comfort in human form. And I chose devotion and austerity instead. But each day, was treasured thenceforth as a gift of service, as a reflection of his great love for me and for all. So I pray that you will at least take this lesson in appreciation for what you have from your enforced solitude during this global pandemic and be grateful for the chance to sh slow your pace of life if you can. Be thankful in your prayers and meditations for all that is good knowing that each moment is a precious opportunity to show your patience and resilience in the face of death, whether real or imagined. Come into your true heart centre, beloved ones. Know that the kingdom of God is within you and is where you will find your centre of consciousness. Or, as I know it, your one true and divine soul, an everlasting part of all that is. Thank you. Please follow me along in my next journey in part three called God Works in Mysterious Ways. I wish you well. All is well.